you shouldn't smoke so much. You really shouldn't after all those dreadful warnings. Mrs. Carpenter's husband gave it up and he got run down by a bus a week later. That's got nothing to do with him giving up smoking. No, but it didn't do him any good, did it? <laughs> Mrs. Crabb? I'm Miss Pinsent, your area supervisor. Were you smoking, Mrs. Crabb? Yeah. No, it's against company rules. I shall report you. You do that, area supervisor. She's all mouth and trousers. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Berryweather. Good morning, Miss. Spicing fags out. Jim? Jim? Where the hell is he? That's easy. Ah, you got my wire. What's good about it? Yes, I got your wire. Would I have got up in the middle of the night to be here otherwise? So you're lucky I've been up all night in that blasted train. I couldn't get asleep and no breakfast either. So what's all the excitement about? Poor McFarlane. He can't raise the money. He's dropping out. Then Walden's take up a bit'll fall through. Not on your Nelly, it won't, mate. Sydney. Sydney, my boy. You and I are gonna make a bid to take over Waldron's properties. <laughs> on our own, Sydney. You're so quick. The shares were down to 15 bob last night. We are going to offer Waldron a pound. Cash. A pound? Cash? Jim Ryder, have you gone raving mad? Where's that dumb blonde put that Waldron file? I found her. Ah, look, as soon as I got that wire, I knew it meant trouble. Anyway, where the hell are we going to find the money? Borrow it? Bor <clears throat> borrow it? At 40%? Now I know you've gone mad. Of course I have. <laughs> you buy me breakfast. I'll explain why. Come on, we'll get to that cheap dump round the corner. It won't cost you so much. A pound cash. <laughs> now, I'd give them a quid out of my own pocket if only they'd stop walking over my clean floor. <sighs> I thought I heard voices. Can't you finish this floor yet? I did. But I heard of rhinoceros that just went through. Rhinoceroses? Oh, dear. Well, if he doesn't want it, I know somebody what does. Morning, Mrs. C. Morning, Colonel. Bills, bills, bills. Ooh. They say rain's on the way. Well, I hope so. I need heavy going for Epsom this week. You and your horses. What happened to that one yesterday? You know, the one what couldn't lose. Last, in a field of 15. Oh, well, never mind. Better luck next time. How long can this sort of luck last, Mrs. C? Doesn't matter what it is. Horses, dogs, the boat race. I get a tip to buy Belling's machine tools straight from the horse's mouth. I buy the shares, they double their profits. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Lovely. What did they do? They dropped half a crown. Oh, you never can tell with horses. Horses? You don't listen to a word I say, do you? Oh, yes, I do. I don't understand a word of it, but I do listen. Oh. I've got something for you. What is it? Oh, a cigar. Good condition, too. 
Where did you pinch this? I didn't pinch it. I don't pinch things as well you should know. Mrs. C, you didn't buy it. There's no band, and it's been pierced. That's why I took it. I found it in the waste paper basket. Oh, thanks very much. Very kind thought. Now, you sit there and have a little smoke. It'll do you good. I'll go and make you a nice cup of tea. I'm sorry, where did you get the cigar? Why, what's the matter with it? Isn't it any good? Just shows you can never tell, can you? Posh offices and all. There's nothing the matter with the cigar, dear. It's probably one of the best cigars that's made. Where did you get it? Place where I work, early mornings. I saw it lying there and I says to myself, I says, oh, the Colonel would love that, I says. So I took it, he didn't want it. Did you see, who is he? The man I work for, Mr. Ryder. Not James Ryder. That's him, Jim Ryder. You know him well enough to call him Jim. Oh, me? No, I've never spoken to him in my life. Why, what's so special about him, anyway? Nothing, really. He's just one of those wide boys who's making a fortune just now out of property development. Oh, he can't be the same bloke. If you'd have heard him carrying on about a quid one way or the other, he'd have to borrow that anyway. What wouldn't I give to know what's going on in his mind? Not much, I shouldn't think. If you could have seen the way they was marching up and down on my clean floor, I could have killed them stone dead, the pair of them. I thought the other bloke was going to drop dead when he said he was going to offer Waldron a quid. Mrs. Cragg, are you sure he said that? Sure as I'm here. He said, I am going to offer Waldron one pound cash. Give me quite a turn, it did. Because Waldron was Mr. Cragg's second name. He did. Oh, dear, another one for the nut house, if you ask me. Yes, all right, I'll hold on. Here's your cup of tea. It's getting cold. Damn the tea. I'm sorry, Mrs. C, but this is important. This is probably the hottest tip I've ever had. Dear, oh, dear, you and your horses. Mrs. C, this has nothing whatever to do with horses. Yes, I'm holding on. You see, a chap was going to buy a firm called Waldron's. According to this, he changed his mind. The shares will go down. I shall buy some. Then I shall wait for Ryder to make his offer. The shares will rise, and I'll sell them at a profit. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, it's just about as simple as that horse that couldn't lose yesterday. I'll make your fresh right, cap. Holding on, sir? Yes, yes, I am holding on. Your cousin, the gallant colonel. Oh, well, blimey, more dad tips. Hello, sir. What can I do you for? Roderick. Can you give me a quotation for Waldron this morning? I might have guessed he wants a quotation on Waldron's. Listen, one hour ago, the news broke that McFarlane's bid had been withdrawn. We haven't been off the phone since. You can't even give them away. You can't? Splendid. I want you to buy me 5,000 pounds worth of Waldron's ordinaries. 5,000? Are you completely out of your tiny mind? Where the hell could you find 5,000 quid? I don't have to find it. I'm buying it for the account. For the account? My dear idiot, do you realise they've got to be paid for eventually? And on the present showing, they wouldn't be worth the paper they're printed on. I'll give you security. Security? Such as what? A pair of cufflinks, a watch. Sorry, old man, I'm a stockbroker, not a pawnbroker. I wasn't thinking of cufflinks or a watch. I was thinking of this house. Do I get this right? You'll put that house up against my buying £5,000 worth of Waldron shares? Yes. Get your solicitor to send the deeds round right away. Bye, sir. Well, Mrs. Cragg, I've done it. I've plumbed for Waldron's up to the hilt. Well, I hope it wins. Here's your tea. If it does, we'll split the profits 50-50. Well, that's very kind of you, Colonel, but if you don't... No, 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 I insist. One doesn't get a tip like that every day. Fair's fair, 50-50. I was about to say, Colonel, as how I haven't had no wages for the past fortnight. So that'll be £2.10, if you don't mind. Well, I am a little bit short of the ready this week. I wonder if you could possibly wait till next Monday. Looks as though I shall have to, doesn't it? Thank you. If we get control of Waldron's, we can take over this site just like that. Think of it. All under one conveyance, one owner, due for demolition in the next ten years. Nice and tidy, eh? If we get a wiggle on, we can have the whole thing completed in eight, ten months, say a year at the outside. I still don't like it, Jim. I mean, we, 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 we've got enough on our plate as it is. Do you realise if I'd have listened to your gloomy warnings, we'd still be in Stepney with 18 quid in the bank? And you made sure I could only get that out at three quid a day, didn't you? 18 quid is a lot more than we've got in the bank at the moment, Jim Ryder. 
What about... Uh, hello? What they kick? Uh, yes, sir. Will you hold on a moment, sir? I'll just see if he's in. Uh, out. I'm done. I got the tip this morning. Excuse me, sir. You're wanted on the telephone. Hello, Ryder. What? What? No, I certainly did not. Okay, thanks. Only two people knew that we'd made a takeover bid for Waldron's. You and I. Have you been talking? No. Why? Because this morning somebody bought 5,000 quid's worth. What? They sent the price up by one and sixpence already. Come on, we better get back. I'll get in contact with Waldron's before the price rises any higher. Hello? Oh, hello, Roderick. What's been happening? I've been trying to get you all the morning. Well, I didn't think they could sink any lower, but they managed it. Lower? Oh, no. And I was just coming round to measure the house for carpets and curtains when the rumour of the right of takeover began to circulate. The share started to rise. And the rumour was confirmed, and they rocketed. Rocketed? Well, what are they standing at now? Nineteen and six. This means you've already doubled your investment. Yes, you've made a nice, cool five thousand pounds. Sell them. Sell the lot. You're a lucky devil. You must have had the tip straight from the horse's mouth. Well, from my char lady. Char lady? Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, Mrs. C. There we are. Hello. You don't look too good. You stay there and I'll get you a nice pick-me-up. And what brought this little lot on, if it's not a rude question? Mrs. C, you remember when we bought those shares, I told you we'd split the profit 50-50? Yes, so you did. I'd forgotten all about it. Don't you worry about that here. Take this, it'll make you feel better. I'll go and put the kettle on your tea. We're ready in no time. In fact, of course, when I bought the shares, I see I didn't realize what might happen. Oh, Colonel, you haven't lost a lot of money over that bit of paper I give you, have you? No, no, no I didn't lose money, Mrs. Craig. I made it. You made it? Oh, I am glad. Isn't that nice? You could do with a few quid. Yes, it's more than a few quid, Mrs. Craig. It's quite a lot more. More? Yes. Guess. Um, 50 pounds? More. Not a hundred pounds? More. More? Not as much as 200 pounds? Yes, Mrs. Craig, as much as 200 pounds. Oh, well, that's wonderful, isn't it? And remember, you're in 50-50. Oh, no. Oh, nonsense, Mrs. Craig, I insist. A bargain's a bargain. 200 pounds? I can't make the tea. <laughs> no, Colonel, that money. It isn't right. Well, I, I may have slightly underestimated it. You see, I'm not very good at figures. No, Colonel. It was your idea. Yes, but Mrs. Craig, I... No, I will take 50 pounds and not a penny more. Is that as much as you expected? As much as I... I didn't expect a brass farthing. I go and make the tea. It was real kind of you giving me that 50 pounds, Colonel. I know you did promise me half, but a lot of people would have kept their mouths shut. And I would have been none the wiser, would I? Nonsense, Mrs. Craig. You had my word as an officer. And I trust a gentleman. Oh, you could have told me you only made a fiver. I'd have been quite happy. That's half your trouble, Colonel. You're too honest. <laughs> And all we was a bit posh for the street outing, and the kids don't half enjoy that, no mistake. So it was lucky for them you made that 200 pounds, wasn't it? I didn't. Didn't what? I didn't make 200 pounds. But you distinctly told me. Never mind what I told you, Mrs. Craig, I didn't make 200 pounds. I made 5,000.
did you say? Five thousand pounds. I did, Mrs. Craig. Yes. I think perhaps it'd be safer if I were to give you your share right away. Now, just a minute, Colonel. Let me get this straight. Are you telling me that you made five thousand pounds out of that bit of paper I give to you? That and a little bit of specialised knowledge. Then somebody must have lost five thousand pounds. No, nobody lost five thousand pounds, Mrs. Craig. We bought shares at a certain price and sold them at a better price. That's high finance. It smells high to me. Oh, that's what the stock exchange is for, Mrs. Craig. So that ordinary people, you know, people like you and I, can express our trust in this or that industrial concern and keep the great wheels of commerce turning. I didn't see no wheels of commerce. All I saw was a bit of paper. And I didn't have no confidence in that because I didn't know what was written on it, did I? And you didn't have no confidence neither because you never knew it existed. Not until I give you that cigar wrapped up in it. It um, isn't right. It can't be. A few pounds is one thing, but five thousand pounds is a different kettle of fish. Nonsense, Mrs. Craig. People are doing it all the time. Not people like me, isn't There must be something wrong somewhere. Mrs. Craig, there's nothing wrong. You don't think I do anything dishonest, do you? Yes. Well, I didn't in the end, did I? Well, it's legal, Mrs. Craig. What's legal can't be dishonest. In that case, there won't be any harm in my telling him about it, will there? Telling who? Mr. Ryder, it was his bit of paper. And he can have this and all. After all, it must be his. It was him what had the confidence. But you're not going to take my check to Mr. Ryder. I am. My mind is made up. There is no time like the present. Good morning. Can I help you? Good morning, miss. I'm the lady what does here of a morning. Oh, yes. Well, I was wondering if I might see the gentleman... Uh... Oh, Mr. Ryder. Uh, of course, if they had their way, they'd bung us all into crowded grottos like what the Germans did. I told you it was big business, and if a superb block of luxury offices ain't big business, I'd like to know what is. Ryder Enterprise Limited. Sounds like a cartel to me. What's a cartel? Well, it's... Oh. Well, anyway, they're the worst. You mark my words. They'll, they'll, they'll ground us all to pieces, just like, just like the rest of them. Ground us to pieces? Who? The capitalists. And, and, and what will they say when our bellies are flapping for lack of bread? What will they say? Let them eat cake. Oh, I like cake. What can I do for you? Well. Yes? Mr. Baker of Southern Demolition for you, sir. Put him through. Right up. All right, there's George here. Hello, George. Hello, mate. Oh, are you all right? A oh, fine, old boy, fine. I've uh, got a little job for you. Oh. I want you to uh, give me a price on pulling down some houses in Pitt Street. I'll make a part. No, Pitt Street. You know, it's a property we've just taken over. Are you in a hurry about it, mate? Of course I'm in a hurry. Any sitting tenants? Sitting tenants? Well, aren't they always, old boy? Yeah. <laughs> don't you worry about it. I'll have them out of there before you can say bulldozer. Yeah, careful. Good. Well, I'll pick you up in a few minutes and we'll go straight down to the site. All right, see you down there, Jim. Out of it, Dutch. Right. Now, Mrs. Craig. Well, sir, there were two things, really. Two? Look, sir, this won't take up very much of your valuable time. So you're the man who's going to pull down Pitt Street. That's right. You live there? Yes, I do. And all my friends live there and all. I get it. And I've asked you to use your position here to persuade me not to pull it down. Nobody has asked me to do nothing. I've come here off my own bat. Now look, Mrs. Cragg. The world is changing, and it's no good you and your friends resisting that change. You've got to accept it, assist it, and if possible, anticipate it. Let me tell you what the Ministry says about Pitt Street. These buildings are scheduled for demolition in the next ten years, as they no longer measure up favourably to the required standards of housing. Can 
Those houses are no better nor no worse than the day they was built. They haven't changed. And human beings haven't changed, neither. They've still got two legs and two hands, haven't they? And they've only got one head. Nothing's changed. Some of them families have lived in their houses all their lives. They've grown up together. Why, there's one old lady there of over 80. She's lived there 60 years. It's about time she had a change, then, isn't it? It's always the same with progress. As soon as anybody wants to build anything, somebody squawks. Now, look, Mrs. Cragg, if you and your friends had any sense, they'll take the alternative accommodation I'm offering and get moving. Alternative accommodation? And what had you in mind for me? Well, let's see. Ah, here's a nice little house in uh, Birthborough. Birthborough. I wouldn't live there if you paid me. That's one of them new towns, isn't it? I don't understand you people. The minister goes to all his trouble and expense at building these new towns. And you... Take Birkborough. You take it. He's got the lot. Pubs. I've got a pub. Dance halls. Dance halls. Golf course. Do you know I haven't had a round of golf for I don't know how long? All right, then. What has Pitt Street got that Birkborough hasn't? Me friends. And I'm not getting out. And you can't bundle us into the street because the law wouldn't let you. You're forgetting that. And you're forgetting that technically this is a condemned slum. Slum, indeed. Yes, slum. And any judge would lend a sympathetic ear to any proposition I might make, especially as I'm offering alternative accommodation. He might, and then again he might not. Granted, and if he didn't, I could appeal. Can't you see? You're playing a game you can't possibly win. You mean because we haven't got no money? Partly. Their money isn't everything. Oh, you mean it's something else? Oh, it might do you a bit of good to want for something, me lad. To know what it's like to struggle. Marnit, let me tell you something. Do you know Orpington Street? Yes, Orpington Street. Just behind Pitt Street. I was born there. Number 13. Do you know how much my old mother got when she was a child? A bloody sight less than what you get now. Nine pence an hour, that's what she got. When she could get it. When the landlord kicked her out of the house, there was no alternative accommodation. She went into a workhouse. I went into an home. I learned. Nobody gives you anything for nothing. Don't they? Of course they don't, girl. You think I'm hard, don't you? Maybe I am. Yeah, good business and sentiment, Domix. If you want anything, you've got to go out and get it. So long as it's legal. So long as it's legal. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. That letter, is it for me? No, sir. It's for me. So you didn't give him back his check, Mrs. Cragg? No. I want you to... What do you call it? Reinvest it. Reinvest it? Oh, I don't think I'd care to do that. You see, it wouldn't be the same next time. I only wish we could get a tip like this every day. There is no reason why we shouldn't. Do you know what he said to me? He said to me, if you want something, go out and get it. Any way you can. He said it. I didn't. So he's only got himself to blame for what happens next. Next? What's been done once can be done again and again. Well, steady on, Mrs. Gregg. I mean, I don't know what... Do you know these people? Well, of course, these are household names in the city. Property tycoons, investment trusts, washing machines. These are some of the smartest operators there are. But you don't work for them, do you? No. But I know the ladies who do. <laughs> I'm not having nobody telling me where I'm going to live. And the only way to stop them pushing us around is to fight them. What with? Where are we going to get the money? Where everybody else gets it from. We are going to make it. Make it? How? 
out of bits of waste paper that we find lying about in the offices, what we clean. Oh, I don't think that would be much good, Mrs. Craig. Mum had 200 copies of Ravalli she wanted me to sell, and when I took them to the fish shop, they only gave me a shilling. Do you mind? We're not going to sell this waste paper. We are going to make use of it for information. Information? There is lots of information to be had from waste paper baskets, blotters, writing pads and such like. But we do nothing dishonest, understand? Nothing that isn't strictly legal. What Mrs. Craig means... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> what Mrs. Craig means is we only make use of material which is in the public domain. Uh, things that have been thrown away or left lying around for anyone to see. No opening of drawers or pri private letters, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. We just pick up anything what looks interesting and hand it over to the Colonel. It'll be my job to examine and evaluate the contents. Oh, dear. And acting on the information evaluated, we buy stocks and shares and such like. What with? With money, of course. What the hell do you usually buy things with? You can't make money without money. <laughs> what could we raise? We'd be lucky to put up 40 quid between the lot of us. We shall start with a modest capital of 5,000 pounds. Oh. Did I hear you say 5,000? 5, 5,000 is what Mrs. Craig and I made this week from one piece of information from one waste paper basket. Oh, I'm sorry, my hubby would never... I mean, we've always been a respectable family. I couldn't be a party to anything like that. But why not, madam? It's perfectly legal. No, it couldn't be. Not like bingo or the football pools. But it's exactly like the football pools, except that we know the results beforehand. Does that satisfy you, Mrs... Uh... Merriweather? I suppose so. A stock exchange a cankerous growth on the dying body of capitalism. A slave market for the buying and selling of the workers. After the revolution, there won't be no stock exchange. Now, oh, do leave off about the perishing revolution. Are you coming in or stopping out? Well? Well, seeing the revolution don't seem to be happening yet a while, all right. Yeah, but don't you forget, it's against me principles to make money out of the exploitation of the workers. Very well, then. I'll set about forming the company and finding us some office premises. I don't forget, Absolute secrecy is essential. A careless word to a husband or a fellow char... I mean, office cleaner and... Well, need I go on? Well, if you're sure it's all right. Well, of course it's all right. Good heavens, there's nothing to prevent any of you ladies being accepted into the Salvation Army. Now, there are only two things to remember. You may be able to obtain useful information from other ladies in your profession. Pick their brains by all means. Don't confide in them. And remember, however well we do, we shall all of us have to go on being char ladies. <laughs> I mean, of course, I shall have... <laughs> Any question? Yes. I'm, I'm sure it's a wonderful organisation. I don't want to join. Don't want to join us? Why not? I want to join you. I don't want to join the Salvation Army. It's their max. <laughs> No, I'll do no, it. don't bother, Mrs. Izzy. Don't no bother. Two's as easy as one. Is 53. 53. Oh, come along, ladies. You're late. 
How do you expect us to find the place when you've got that Lardy Zulu on the door? Not very bright, are we? That's our name. Ladies who do. Ladies who do. Oh, yes, very comical. Oh, this must be costing us a bomb. Well, it's one of the finest dresses in the city. Naturally, it's not cheap. How much? Well, including the rates, the central heating, and, of course, the lift, it comes to... Ah, uh, don't tell me. It'll spoil me day. Well, ladies, welcome to the first board meeting of Ladies Who Do Limited. I see you've all brought your basic material with you. Now remember, information is the source of all wealth, and hidden in these shopping bags is the information we need. All we have to do is to sift and sort and sift again. Naturally, there'll be a lot of rubbish, but among the rubbish will be what we're looking for, glittering, shining gold. <coughs> well now, have any of you ladies any questions? Well, shall we get on with the business? <laughs> I meant with fellow office cleaners, not the wives of our national leaders. Well, now, ladies, I have to report very satisfactory progress. Our cash balance now stands at 26,007 pounds, six shillings and fourpence halfpenny. Yes, on paper. Doing, Mrs. Craig. Uh, morning, Miss. Still cold. I said, what are you doing, Mrs. Craig? Uh, mosquito. Place is teeming with them. It's the central heating. It isn't on. Uh, no, that's just the point. It's cold outside, so they come inside looking for the warmth. When they can't find it, they try to get out again, mistake the mirror for the window and get stuck on the glass. Guess what I found in my toilet? A mosquito! That's right, a dirty great mosquito. <laughs> See, the place is teeming with them. He's done it again. Up another 12, they've gone mad. It's uncanny, how does he do it? Doesn't know anything or anybody? Well, for somebody who doesn't, he's doing very well. This means he's nearly doubled his capital again. Why didn't I buy any of the wretched things? That'd be all. gentlemen. We've all been hit by this thing. I'm getting so jumpy I don't even trust myself. What we want to know is, who is this Whitforth fella? Where does he get his information? He seems to be able to anticipate every move I make. Gentlemen, has it occurred to you that he may be an agent? What the hell for? Some foreign power who shall remain nameless. Oh, not them again. Oh, my God. Mr. Ryder, perhaps you have a better explanation. Perhaps he's psychic. 
Spiritualists say that the power of transferring thought... I'm interested in the power of transferring shares. Now, let's get down to cases. Take this Waldron business. I hadn't discussed it with a soul, living or dead. Not even my partner. It was all in my mind. Do you talk in your sleep? I'm not married. I expect you're wondering why I've called this special meeting. Well, two pieces of information have recently come into our possession. Neither of them of much importance alone, but together. Well, let me explain. On the one hand, we know that the shares of an Irish concern, Pig Producers Limited, have fallen. Apparently, they're having marketing difficulty. Your scribbling pad, Mrs. Higgins. On the other hand, your blotting paper, Mrs. Gregg. Cash and carry supermarkets, one of the largest in the country, has bought land within five miles of pig producers. They are planning to open a bacon curing factory. This will send the shares of Pig Producers Limited rocketing. That makes sense. Well, what's on your mind, Colonel? I suggest we go for the killing. Put the lot on pig producers. The lot? Well, it's taking a hell of a risk, isn't it? Well, of course it's a risk, but we might wait a lifetime to get two bits of information like this. Putting money on pigs. It's like putting money on horses, isn't it? Well, I don't see why. I mean, after all, the pigs are there. They're going to build the factory. The shares must double. If it comes off, we shall have 120,000 pounds in the kitty. Well, ladies, shall we vote on it? <laughs> Those in favour? Well, I can't sit here all day. I've got me ironing to do. I always did fancy a bit of Irish bacon myself. Well, might as well be hung for a pig as a lamb. What are we voting for? Pigs! Carried unanimously. Signing and undertaking a move straight away. It's worth paying them hundred quid each. Well, I don't like it, Jim. I don't like it. I mean, legally, they're in the right. Oh, God, blimey, here we go again. Can't you understand? Unless we get moving right away, we're going to have to borrow money at 50% to pay back our 40% loan. Jim, Jim, you... I can't understand these people around here. They'd be much better off in one of those new towns. Like that one we passed through on the Great North Road the other week. Marvellous. And another thing, I'm surprised at you, a working man. A lick spittle for the capitalist bosses. And look at you, not an ounce of flesh on you, probably weeks since you had a square meal. What did you have for your dinner? Well, if you matter, had any dinner. Well, I'm asking matter. you, what did you have for your dinner? Well, I'm trying to tell you. As a matter of fact, I didn't have it. No, of course you didn't. And what about your bosses, eh? Look at them sitting there stuffing themselves with goose and caviar. Yeah, well, you go and tell them that the bourgeois and proletarian blood will mingle in the gutters of the Charing Cross Road before they get us out of here. Go on, off, tell them. Go on. <laughs> go on, try one. I think you'll find them very nice. Ta. No, oh, is it clear? Oh, we have to put the hole in, don't we? Oh, ah, Mrs. Gubbins? Oh, yes. You have arrived just in time to see your husband receive the sum of 100 pounds. Oh, whatever for? All you have to do is to sign this undertaking to move within the next month. Oh, we couldn't do that, I'm afraid. Why don't you shut up? And uh, let the gentleman finish. Now, your sign. Uh huh. A wise decision, Mr. Gubbins. What I'm sure you won't regret. I'm sure I won't neither. You see, uh, we was moving out next week anyway. Ta da. Ta <laughs> Yes, you do, madam. Believe me, you do. If you wake my husband before he's finished his lay-down, he'll kill you. Oh, not when he knows what I've come for. 
What have you come for? To give you a hundred pounds. Hundred pounds? Hundred pounds. Mrs. Middleman. Shh. Whatever for? Well, as you know, these houses are being pulled down to make way for new blocks of offices. Now, my firm are very anxious to get started as soon as possible. Now, all you have to do is to sign this form here, stating that you are prepared to leave the house within the month, and I shall give you a hundred pounds. My husband don't want to move. He said so only the other day. It's not a question of what he wants to do. It's, it's not a question of what he wants to do. It's a question of what he's got to have to do. Now, we have the law on our side, Mrs. Medweather, and the council. Dear, put the council man in hospital last year. <clears throat> now, look. <clears throat> now, look, Mrs. Medweather. I'm being as nice as I possibly can about this. It's not a question of what he wants to do. Now, we've got the law on our side. We'll have to get your husband to see reason. Otherwise, I'm afraid that I Otherwise, shall... Otherwise, you're what? You're lucky. I'm in a good mood today. Right, Daddy, so that. I'm going to explain something to you. Yes, yes, of course. We ain't going to move. No, no, quite so well. Not for nobody. No, no. And if you come back here annoying me and my little missus, I'll splatter you all over that wall. Do you understand? You make yourself abundantly clear, sir. Come back here again, and I'll break your neck. What's this? Jeez, silly, what do you think it was? I wouldn't say what I thought it was, but it isn't tea. Warm dishwater, more like. Mine tasted all right. Perhaps you like tepid water. Some people prefer theirs boiled. It was boiled. You heard the kettle whistle. Doesn't matter what I heard. It's what I taste that counts. This water wasn't boiled. Go and boil your head. <gasps> God may forgive you for that, but I won't. Never. Not if I live to be a hundred. But, but, but she's, she's lived here 60 years. She's over 80. It'd kill her to move. She's very frail. Oh, how frail? What I mean, uh, one doesn't like to think of such things, but how long will the poor old... Hmm? Do you think? Well, it's difficult to say. Her mother, my gran, lived to be 104. 104? 104? That's 24 years. Now, look, Miss Parrish, we're starting on the site right away. It's for her own good, you know. I mean, all these old houses around here are going to be torn down. There'll, there'll be bulldozers and dynamite and, and dust. Well, it'll be like the Blitz all over again. Oh, she loved the Blitz. She was never happier than when the bombs were falling. She'd, she'd look out of her window and she'd shake her fist and... and Miss Parrish, if people aren't reasonable with us, we can take it to the court and let the judge decide. Oh, dear. I'm sure... Quite right. You are sure that any court will say that a nice modern flat is better than a dusty old relic like this? Let me talk to her. I'm quite sure I can make her see the wisdom of it. Oh, we can but try. How dare you come in with suggestions like that? Now, go on, get out of my house! Get out and stay out! Parrish, better mark that one there, uh, doubtful. How are you doing? How am I doing? Would you really like to know? I've just been dragged through the Kremlin backwards and bounced by a bruiser. Well, I've got one signature. It's a bit of a struggle, but I uh, finally persuaded him. One? What is the good of one? You've got to get the last one before you can start work here. And do you know what she just said? She said the gutters will be flowing with blood before they leave here. And I think she's right. Don't tell me you're worried about a few old scrubbers. You're forgetting there's a fortune in this deal, and half it's yours. Nearly half. No, Jimmy boy. It's all yours. Because I am going back to the office to dissolve the partnership before you have to borrow money at 60%, to repay the money you borrowed at 50%, to pay back the 40% loan. Sid. Sid? Old yellow legs! <laughs> Good morning. Oh, oh. Hey, 
expect you're wondering why I spend the night here. What's in the flask? Tea. Here's your spare drop. Help yourself. I've got a throat like an axle. I've been celebrating rags to riches in 15 years. Yes, yeah, the truth to know. I started out buying rags. Did you know that? My partner reckons I'm going back again. My ex-partner, I should say. He's walked out and taken his share of the capital with him. Does that mean you'll be giving up Pitt Street? Not on your Nelly. Well, if you're that skinned, how can you go on with that great big office building? <laughs> Come in. Don't let high finance baffle your girl. It's dead simple. The secret is in using other people's money. The building contractor cuts himself in for a share of the profits, so he works for nothing. I sell the office blocks, floor by floor, in advance. So I've made a huge profit before I've even got the foundations in. Oh, that's clever, isn't it? When it comes off. No, thanks. I'd rather smack me on. Go on, treat yourself. Do you good. Ciao. I'll be frank with you. Unless I can get a work on Pitt Street, I'll have to sell the whole site at a thumping great loss. One minute up to my neck. If I'm going to save anything out of this mess, I'm going to have to get a work on Pitt Street. Look, Ma, you can help me. How? There's 500 quid in it for you. 500? For doing what? Nothing. You told me yourself that nobody gives you anything for nothing. Well, practically nothing. All you've got to do is persuade the sitting tennis to sign on the dotted line by Monday morning. A thousand. That's my top. I don't tell me you couldn't do with it. Oh, I bet you ain't got two openings to scratch yourself with. You don't understand, do you? We don't want to move. Then you don't understand. Somebody sometime is going to go ahead with a scheme down there, even if I don't. So why fight it? So cash in, do yourself a bit of good. What good will it do me to sell me friends? There's one thing that money can't buy, and that's friends. No, I reckon we'll just stick where we are. All right, all right. I'm going to have to do it the hard way. <laughs> Spicy fags out. Spice and fags it. Some nut of a gym with the wrong number. Hey, you were saying what you was going to do. Was I? Don't worry about it, Ma. You'll find out soon enough. Thanks for the tea. This is Mark Strang. I've spoken to my associates. We're prepared to come in with you on the Pitt Street project, but we'd have to start right away. We don't want our capital tied up indefinitely. The contractors are starting on the empty houses first thing Monday morning. Is that soon enough? Yes. I'll be frank with you, Ryder. A little dicky bird told us you had some trouble down there. A few old bags being difficult. I can handle them. Don't you worry. I hope so, because if there's any trouble at all, you can count us out. Oh, there's the pips. I'll be down first thing Monday morning. Did I hear voices? I was singing. And then the supervisor come in and I had to switch it off. Yes, it's all very interesting, but I don't see how it helps your situation. You see, even if you make things difficult for Mr. Strang and he drops out, somebody else will step in and buy it. 
Yes, we will. What did you say? I said we'll buy it. Whatever for? What will we do with it? Look, if Ryder can get permission to build offices, we can get permission to put up two blocks of flats with shops underneath. They'll let like hotcakes. But we haven't got the capital. We will have when the pig producer's deal comes through. I'm afraid you don't know what you're saying. I know exactly what I'm saying. Look, supposing we did buy the area, that would leave us with not a penny in the bank, right? Right. But how are we going to get the money to put up two blocks of flats? I don't know how much you know about high finance. Not a Kirsten. question of high finance, it's a question of simple arithmetic. The secret is to use other people's money. We cut the contractors in for a share of the profits so they work for nothing. Then we let off the flats before even the foundations is laid. All we've got to do now is to wait for the pigs to bring home the bacon. Just a moment. Hello, Colonel Whitforth speaking. Roderick, yeah? Oh, hello, Roderick. Roderick, I hear you helped yourself to some of those pig producer shares. Wise fellow, always follow Wise them. Wise fellow, have you heard the news? What news? They've gone bust. Are you sure? Colonel, what is it? What's wrong? Spine fever. Not our pigs. They haven't passed away. All 15,000. Where's our capital, then? Gone. All gone. Oh, marvellous, That's isn't it? Marvellous, what did I tell you? I told you we shouldn't risk our lot on it. There he goes. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Listen to me, all of you. The Colonel here put it to the vote. And we all voted. So it's no good blaming him, and it's no good blaming one another. After all, it's not as though we saw the money. It was only writing on bits of paper. Somehow it don't seem so important to me. But what is important is we can't stop Ryder pulling Pitt Street down on Monday. Yeah, I finance. It's a funny business. Ten minutes ago, we had 15,000 pigs. Now we haven't got a ham sandwich between us. Let's have a nice cup of tea. Now, well, I told you big business would beat you in the end. started on my place already. I'll tell them a thing or two. Colonel, what brings you round here? Important news, ladies. Colonel, whatever has happened, don't tell me them pigs have come back to life again. Better than that. This has just come through on the ticker tape. Large deposit. Valuable minerals found in Ireland. They discovered the deposit when they were burying the pigs. Causing heavy speculation in pig producers' shares. Yeah. Does this mean we'll get our capital back? Almost certainly. That and a great deal more. Pity that to happen too late to save the stream. Yeah. Maybe it isn't too late. Do you remember what Mr. Strang said? He said... If there is going to be any trouble, I am getting out. So we are going to see that he gets plenty of trouble, aren't we? <laughs> 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 Go 
Colonel. You go back and look after that contraption of yours and leave us to look after Mr. Ryder and Mr. Strang. Ladies. So we take your car or mine? It'll have to be yours, I'm afraid. Uh, my Rolls is away having a second telephone installed. Have to sell it, have you? But... This little bus has done me very well for 17 years, so I don't see the sense in wasting my brass on Rolls Royces. Mind my uncle. Here, look out. Here comes Big Ed. Right, oh, lads. This is it, right? Oh, I've got you again, have I? All right, lads, these are the houses we're going to knock down. Starting, of course, with the empty ones. <laughs> Don't want to make any mistakes about them, do we? <laughs> <laughs> 6, 8, 13, 15, 18, and 22. That's the one in the end. Right, oh, come on, lads, get the compressor going, get the gear out the truck. Come on, let's be having you, let's be having you. I just can't understand it. From her heartbeat, I'd say she'd live another 20 years, but I can find absolutely nothing wrong with her. But there it is. <laughs> Sometimes these old people know the best they know when the time has come to pass on. How true. How very true. She must have absolute quiet, of course. I'll bring her around something to make her sleep later on. In the meantime, give her anything she fancies. Anything she fancies, within reason. A drop of uh, thin gruel, a cup of weak tea. The poor soul. I'm going. I know I'm going. Don't forget. Absolute quiet. <laughs> Would you mind explaining what the hell you think you're trying to do? Do you realize that... And do you realize there's a dear old lady dying in that house? Dying? Yes, dying. You've heard of it, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, if you start up your damn machinery before she... Oh. Anyway, if you start it up, I'll have the authorities on you. Well, I... I was only trying to get the work done, I... How would you like it if it was your poor old mother lying up there breathing her last? Poor dear old lady, lying there, wandering in her mind, terrified, thinking the air raids have started all over again. I don't know what to do. I can only suggest one course of action. What's that? We'll have to have a meeting, won't we? Right, brothers? Right. Come on, let's go. Right, brothers, I see we have a quorum. And I needn't prevail upon you to show your cards. I think we'll go straight ahead with the... Uh, would you close in a little bit, brothers? We have a, a spy on the outside of our little community here. Now. That's Ryder. And look, that must be Strang. Uh, that we're all in a queue. Yeah, right, right, right. Hands up, then. Must be their tea break. what it's all about. There's a poor old lady lying in there, sick and dying, and these gentlemen have kindly agreed to stop work. Kindly agreed to stop? Yeah, and we held a meeting. And this resolution was passed unanimously. <clears throat> this meeting seriously deprecates the derogatory effect on the old lady's health and unanimously decides to adjourn work until status quo reigns. 
Are you talking about old Mother Parish? You couldn't have a derogatory effect on her health if you ran over her with a bulldozer. Don't listen to him. Here's the poor old lady's daughter. How old is your mother, dear? Eighty-one. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Eighty-one! Isn't she entitled to a little peace and quiet? Lying there so frail and weak. Frail and weak? She wasn't frail and weak when I saw her. She went into a rapid decline. Rapid decline, Ham! Huh? Ah, oh, if she's so sick, she should be in an hospital. I'll send for an ambulance at my own expense. She's too weak. She can't be moved. This is a frame-up. Can't you see what she's doing? She's trying to stop you pulling down the houses. Have you actually seen the old b bird? Well, no, no, I, I haven't actually not seen her. Of course you haven't. Well, why don't you ask if you can see her? After all, it's going to cost your firm a lot of money when I sue, isn't it? Yes, well, I mean, like, it wouldn't do any harm, would it? I mean, like, just to have a look. All right, then. Just a look. But remember, she's unconscious. Well, she's unconscious. The noise can't be worrying her. She's unconscious from time to time. Would you step this way, please? Now, Mother, you sure you know what to do? Of course I know what to do. I've seen more people snap it than the rest of this perishing street put together. I must ask you to keep very, very quiet, please. If you're come this way. Here they come. Ammunition soon. Bringing up the heavy artillery, eh? You won't get me out of my house in a million years. Not in a million trillion years. Take more than a bulldozer to put that old battle axe under the ground, right? I'll talk to the men. Yeah, what happened? She wrecked the old perishing thing. That's what happened. No. Everything was going fine until she caught sight of Ryder. Then she went stark, raving, blooming mad. Well? I'll, uh, phone the police. The sight of a couple of bobbies will knock some sense into them. Oh, believe me, once this thing gets rolling, nothing will stop it. Absolutely nothing. All right, I'll give you till noon. Council of War in my house, come on. Well, I reckon they made proper Charlies out of us. Preferably. Well, well, sir, we passed this resolution. This meeting deplores the diabolical liberties taken and applies non-ratification to the resolution taken by the previous meeting and declares that a state of status quo now reigns. Well, what the hell does all that mean? What does it mean? It means that we go back to work. Wonderful, marvellous. After tea break. They want a tea break for they haven't done anything yet. They haven't done anything. They've been on the clock since eight. Look, I'll pay them to work through the tea break. Work? They can't do that. That would be creating a precedent. Now, what's the matter? Oh, the men are having a tea break. This is where I came in. No, not quite. The men are up in mad. Well, you see, you see. You went there had their tea. The women will wish they'd never started this. That makes two of us. And they're going to find a place. How? 
So they've called in the police now, have they? Well, what can we do? We can't fight the old Metropolitan Police Force. Oh, yes, we can if we have to, so no more despondent talk, if you don't mind. Well, what about the machines? What about when they start using them? What about it? We'll have to stop them, won't we? I saw a picture once about the French resistance. They didn't do so badly against the old German army. Well, there's more than four of them. There'll be more than four of us by the time I'm finished. Now, Ali, I want you to deliver these to all the people in the street just as quickly as you can. Do I understand you wish to bring a charge of assault against poor old Mrs. Parrish? I don't wish to bring a charge against anybody. I've got some very hard men working here. I'm warning you there might be more trouble. Still, sir, I don't see what harm they could do to a bulldozer. You don't know these old dragons, mate! Now, listen, I'm telling you straight. If there is any more trouble and there are no police around, I shall make out a report and see it gets to the right quarters. Take this round Robertson Street, quick as you can. Right. Come on, lads, let's be having you come along now. Righto, get the compressor started. Now then, I want you to get all them flagstones up to get the bulldozer in. Don't strain yourself, will you? Now. They're not hopping very fast, are they? You know the British workman. Loses every battle but the last. Does he? Come on, girls. Let's get out there and remember, behave absolutely normal and don't do nothing illegal. And if you do, don't get caught. Come on. seen you in ages. Neither have you. Not since my operation. Yes, right. Excuse me, ladies. Well, now, I come over queer on the Wednesday. No, wait. Wait, I'm a liar. It was the Tuesday. The Tuesday. The two oh, I was poor. Then. Well, I can oh, tell you to peaky I now. I oh, you, yes. I've never got over it, you know. <laughs> You go down there and stop that shovel thing. Go on. Right. You and you, go down there and make a nuisance of yourself. Now. Where the hell are those police got to? Could you tell me where I can find Mr. Ryder? You have found him. What appears to be the matter, sir? Sanders? Sir. Ask those women, ladies, to move out of the way of the shovel, will you? Yes, sir. Comes the Friday. Yeah. Back I go into hospital again. Again? Yeah, the oh. ambulance come at one. Yeah. And at two, they was getting me ready for the table. Oh. When I Thank saw you. the ladies, I thought... Could you mind, please? Hello, my girl. If you wouldn't I mind. Thought, You've been up to something. Look here, so fast it won't melt no mouth. A little further, ladies, please. Oh. Thank you. Oi! Get out of it! Well, when they turned me up and I come round, yeah. the doctor told me I was lucky to be alive to tell the tale. Oh, how awful. Yeah. Five hours I was laying on that... Now, ladies, I'm afraid you're going to get hurt if you stay here. Come Did on. they ever find out what it was, then? Yeah. You all right, son? You, you don't look too good. Eh? I said you don't look too good. I ain't. I've just had a diabolical operation. Well, you ought to be using that thing. Here. Quick, come here. Give us that. Pick him up, brother. Right here we go. Why the hell doesn't he get some help? Mr. Ryder, if you need me, I'll be in my car. It's bad enough with that lot, now don't you start. Are you all right? What a shame. Help me. Get more help. Get on to HQ and tell them to send me another patrol car right away. Go on. Yes, sir. 
You haven't had an operation, have you? No, Governor. Thank God for that. If you don't get that thing started and knock something down, I shall go stark raving mad! I can't understand it. I can. There's a telephone box over there. Go and get that message in. And tell them I want two Black Mariahs as well now. Yes, sir. Do you mind, madam? Do you mind? It's five to twelve, and I am... Oh, no, oh, no. Something doesn't get moving soon. He bought gum. You're going back to Bradford. Come on, now. Please, please, please. Now, please. Now, please. Now, please. Now, please. Now, please. Now, I'm not interrupting you, am I? And I wonder if I can impress upon you how important it is for me to carry on with this work. Well, sir, as soon as our police driver comes back... As soon as what? Cars. The steaming net's still standing outside the telephone box! Madam! Wait, please! There's a woman in the box, sir. Well, oh, get her out, man. Get her out. Excuse me, madam, but... Excuse me? Now, look, I am fed up with you policemen busting in here like this. This is a public phone box, isn't it? I know that, madam. And I am a member of the public, and I am using it, aren't I? I have a very important call, madam. And I have a very important call, and I have paid for it, and I am making it. Excuse me, Colonel. There's a blue bottle in the box, and it rather put me off. <sighs> what would you say? Saunders. Sir. Get in that car. Go around the station and tell them, if I don't have two patrol cars and two black Mariahs here in 15 minutes, I'll have the old horse back on a beat. Yes, sir. I said I'd give you till noon, and I will. That gives you just three minutes to knock something down.
done, you murderer. Well, there's no need to go on like that. It, it, it was only an old wreck. It couldn't have been worth more than 50 quid. Couldn't have been worth more than... Do you know what you're saying? I said I'll pay. 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 Oh, you'll pay all right, don't you, Bob? The moment I get back to Bradford, you'll be hearing from my solicitors. I'll be suing you for shock, damages, expenses, default, and the car. Funny how your luck changes, isn't it? Yes, it is. I think. There was going to be two blocks of offices there. And down there, a fountain. And a gold statue. Painted, of course. And now... And now you're thinking of selling. That's right. Just a minute. What the hell are you? Whitforth is the name. Colonel Whitford. Why don't we talk it over at lunch tomorrow? Suppose you call for me at my office. Twelve o'clock? Ah, oh, this is a pleasure, Mr. Ryder. Won't you come in? I want you to meet my board. Mrs. Craig. You. Chars. All of your chars. Do you mind? So that's how you did it. What did I think of that? You crafty... Ah, now, now, Mr. Ryder. Flattery won't get you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ryder, we've decided to invite you to join the board. I suggest we discuss the whole matter over a bite of lunch at the Savoy. Something terrible's happened. All right. Let's have it. When I told Mother we were going to put her in a nice new flat, she said we wouldn't get her out of her house, not in a million years. Oh, blimey. She can't do that to us. We're offering her alternative accommodation. Oh, well. Let's go and have our luncheon, and then I'll go and butter up the old... Watch it. Shall we go? Well, shall we join the ladies? <laughs> 